Exercise 13-25, we're going to buy some treasury stock and then redo the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. So Southern, Amusement, Southern Amusements Corporation had the following stockholders equity at the end of November. On December 30th, Southern purchased 200 shares of treasury stock at $15 per share. So our first requirement is to journalize the purchase of the treasury stock. All right, since we are purchasing treasury stock, which way is cash going? Is cash going up or cash going down? Cash is going to go down, and we have to list debits first. So since cash is going down with a credit, I'm going to skip the first line. And I'm going to do cash first because it's usually easier for students to understand. So how much did we pay for this treasury stock? We bought 200 shares times $15 per share gives us $3,000. So I'm going to copy and paste that because a debit is the same amount. And what are, we, what are we purchasing? What are we getting out of this? We're getting treasury stock. So remember, treasury stock is a contra equity. Contra meaning it's the opposite of equity. Equity increases on the credit side. Since treasury stock is a contra equity, it's going to increase on the opposite side. Therefore, as we buy treasury stock, it's going to go up on the debit side. So that's why we are debiting treasury stock. And our explanation is purchase treasury stock. Check the answer. Fantastic. So now I'm going to move this window over. So now what we have to do is prepare the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet. Assume the balance sheet, excuse me, assume the balance and retained earnings is unchanged. So basically everything's the same as before, and this is the before info. The only thing that's changed is we purchased some treasury stock. So treasury stock has been debited and cash has gone down. So this is the only difference. So now, uh, we need to redo paid in capital, so it's going to, again, st start with common stock. And $5 par does not change at all, so it's common stock, $5 par value. Next, we've got 1,300 shares authorized. So does the number of shares authorized change because we purchased treasury stock? Nope, still the same, still 1,300 shares authorized. Next, we got the number of shares issued and outstanding. Let's start with issued. We had 250 issued. Does buying back some shares change the number issued? No, it's still the same. We still have 250 shares issued. Now let's talk about outstanding. We had 250 outstanding. In other words, it's in the hands of our shareholders. But we bought back up here 200 shares. So our our shareholders had 250, we bought back 200, so our shareholders only now have a total of 50. So that's the number of shares outstanding. So 250 shares were still issued, but only 50 now are outstanding. So you see the difference? Now, here's where some students get confused. What dollar amount do we use? Well, the only thing that has changed since this 1250 and all this other data what was this transaction? So was did the common stock account get affected up here? No, only treasury stock. So this dollar amount is still the same. So I'm going to copy and paste 1250. I can copy and paste 3750 because this is paid in capital and paid in capital was not affected up here. And so we still have that total paid in capital of 5,000. And retained earnings, notice retained earnings is next. And it says up here, assume the balance and retained earnings is unchanged. So we can just double click that, copy and paste. And then if you remember right, treasury stock is listed at the bottom. Now the question becomes, is it listed at cost or par value? It's always listed at cost, so we can keep track of any gains or losses on it. And what amount do we use for the treasury stock? We just look up here. We have a $3,000 debit for treasury stock, so that's what we use here. And one last thing before we do the math. Is this a positive number or a negative number? In other words, what does treasury stock do to stockholders' equity? 
Well, remember, Treasury stock is a contra equity, therefore it lowers it. So I'm going to put a minus here, okay, because I have to subtract. So to get total stockholders' equity right here, we need to add 5,000 plus 50,000 and then subtract 3,000. When we do that, we get 52,000 even. Good job. And then the last thing they're asking, how many shares of common stock are outstanding? Well, remember, we had 250 outstanding. We bought back 200 shares right up here. So take 250 issued, subtract 200, and there's only 50 shares outstanding, which means in the hands of our shareholders. And of course, we already calculated that amount up here. But they just want to reemphasize that you understand how to calculate the number of shares outstanding. Check our answer. Good job. And that's it.